So the uh, subject today is about glue laminated design in advanced design. So I'll give you like kind of a quick introduction on uh, what advanced design can do and uh, how to use it. So I'll go ahead. So I've prepared a few slides first, just to kind of show you some of the um, some of like the dialog boxes and the options related to wood, and then I'll show you directly in the software how to use it. So the uh, first important point is, you know, what uh, design code do we support? So in advanced design, it's an international software. We have Euro code, Canadian code, and uh, US code. So it will focus. Uh, our focus today is the uh, so for web design here in the US, we have the NDS 2018, and for Canada, it's the uh, OAD6 2019. Uh, we also have the uh, up-to-date code for the load combination, seismic, uh, and so on. We included uh, new libraries uh, when we added this module. So uh, as you can see on the uh, left side, we have uh, at the top the uh, wood material for uh, Canada and at the bottom the glue laminated wood material for uh, United States. So those come uh, for United States come from the supplement of the uh, NDS 2018 and um, for the Canadian code it's from the uh, end book. We also added uh, new sections. Um, so I'm showing uh, here the uh, glue laminated sections. Uh, we also have of course sound lumber and uh, SCL. We also group them into their own category, so they're very uh, easy to find. Uh, another thing that is uh, unique to it is the uh, load duration. So uh, in the load combination menu, you can specify the uh, duration for your load combinations. If you're using the uh, generator, so if you let the software uh, build the combination list for you, the duration is automatically uh, applied, so you don't need to uh, do it manually. For the uh, specific properties of uh, each elements, so in advanced design, we can design linear elements uh, in wood, so beams uh, and columns. Uh, so I'm showing you here just the top part of the uh, design options. So um, we can specify things like the usage, the sharing case, if it's uh, wet, dry, uh, treated or not. Um, we can specify all diameters so to reduce the uh, effective sections, section area. Uh, for US code, we have the temperature, uh, but for Canadian code, um, it's not um, it's not applicable to Canadian code. Uh, we also have some uh, additional, bit more advanced option uh, we can specify. So uh, we can ask the software to check uh, the deflection automatically uh, for us. So uh, either as a uh, fixed uh, maximum, so for example, here it's uh, three centimeters, or uh, as a fraction of the length of the element. So it can either be a, a single element or a group of multiple elements. So the software will treat it as if it was one big uh, element. We can check the uh, the bearing, so both at the extremities as well as in the uh, inside the elements. So if it, if it's connected, I, I guess it would be um, a bit more clear when we have the software to show you. Um, we can specify notches and it also do the additional verification related to those. And um, for glue lamp, we have the um, also the extra check for the curved uh, glue lamps. Okay, so now I'll jump straight to advanced design just to show you a bit how it works. So the to specify the code, it's uh, right on the uh, landing page. So we have the configuration menu. Um, also, uh, if you're not an uh, English speaker, we have uh, many uh, different translations uh, that you could use. And so right now I'm using the uh, Canadian code, but after I'll show you with the US code just that you can see the uh, calculation nodes, but I would say the procedure and the workflow is exactly the same for both uh, Canada and uh, US codes. So I'll start a, a new project.
I'm sorry for the uh, small delay. Uh, sometimes we have issues on on a uh, our side uh, since we're using diff a different uh, different build and uh, what is publicly available. While we're waiting, um, guys, if you want to answer the poll questions, they're right on the right hand console. You can click on those. And also, while Etienne is presenting, you can drop any questions that you have in the live chat, and we'll vi visit them at the end during the q and I guess I'll just, I'm really sorry about that. Uh, I'll just restart the software. Um, hopefully, we don't lose too much time on this. You're in good company here. Waleed, I think he knows you. He says, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I recognize many uh, names from the uh, list of attendees. Okay, good. I'm very really sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> so for those who have never seen the software, so this is the uh, interface from Event Design. We have the uh, project browser on the um, left side. So this is where we'll see the list of all of the uh, elements, so structural elements, but also other special types of elements like lines or the uh, work plane we have here. So it allows us to organize the project. We have, we'll have all of our loading and load combinations here also. Um, on the uh, right side, so we have the uh, property panels. In the design, we don't use a dialog box uh, to specify properties on elements. Uh, we uh, use this panel here, so it saves a few clicks. And at the top is uh, all of the tools organized in ribbons, and we can also add uh, extra uh, toolbars. Uh, but I won't need this one for today. Uh, so the tools that we use the most often during modeling is everything that we have on the home tab, but there's a couple of more advanced tools and objects and uh, utilities, so like generators and different tools to modify your structure. And so to show you the with design models, so I'll, I'll keep the structure very simple so we don't spend too much time modeling. I'll just create a short uh, 2D frame right here so I can draw the elements directly uh, on the grid. Um, for support, so in advanced design, the supports, they, it's not like a node that you modify or some, anything like that. It's uh, an element you can place anywhere uh, on the model. So I'll place, place it here at the bottom of the frame. So I'll snap it on the uh, columns. Um, then if we want to modify the properties of those elements, I'll select all of them and I'll go to the property panel. So we don't need uh, everything. So I'll close the panels that we don't need. So it's a bit easier for you to uh, focus on the important, important part. Uh, so first the material, currently it's a, a concrete material if you want to change it to wood. So if we had already included the wood material on, on our project, it would be listed here. Uh, if not, we can access the library directly uh, by clicking on material. And this will give us access to the full uh, library. So we can see the list here. We could uh, also access the library. So they're sorted by category. And so I'll start here with uh, timber uh, CA, and I'll select the uh, glue laminated category. So if I want to, uh, for example, use the uh, SPF 20F EX, I will import it and in the list. So now it will be in the quick accesses and list. And if I select it, when I close the dialog box, it will automatically apply it to uh, the members. So as you can see, I have the GLT material. For the uh, section, um, I could use parent check section, uh, or I could once again access the library and pick one that was created for us. So we have a category for uh, North America timber profile, so they're very easy to access. And what I want is a uh, GL section, and I'll pick the 175 by 418. And when I click on OK, it will apply it to the model. If you wanted to have uh, pinned uh, connections uh, at the bottom, so I could do it either by modifying your support or by um, adding a pin on the uh, element itself. So if I wanted to release the moment in the uh, strong axis, I would go to releases, total releases, 
And then for both extremities, I can specify which degree of freedom I want to release for the uh, moment in the triaxis, that would be the RY rotation. And we can also display it on the screen if we activate these symbols. And maybe not for this uh, top one here. And just a small detail. OK, so now the bottom is fixed and the top, the bottom is uh, pinned, I mean, and the top is uh, fixed. OK, I'll save the project before continuing. OK, so now we got the basic geometry. Uh, we'll need loading and uh, load combinations. So uh, I go to loading. I can create multiple load cases at the same time. I will include one load case for dead load, one for uh, live load. So the first uh, load case uh, with the type dead load will automatically include the uh, self-weight of the structure. So if I click on the uh, dead load case, I can see there's a, a gravity field and it's selection all. That means it, it's applied to the uh, entire model. If I wanted to add additional uh, dead load, uh, there are two ways I could do it. So the first one would be to uh, go to uh, load and then linear load and I can trace it anywhere on the model. So in advanced design, the loading is uh, completely independent from the structural elements. So you can draw it anywhere. It's not like assigned to a specific one. Um, so it has a few advantages. Uh, so it, it allows you, for example, to have like one load that covers multiple uh, elements without, um, instead of having to specify multiple uh, individual loading. For a live load, so there's a, the second method you could use to uh, apply loading, which is the one I personally prefer, is to right click on the element and then use the load on selection. So it works with one or multiple elements and it just creates a load that will cover the entirety of the element selected. Okay, so uh, and the load will be listed here. So if you want to modify them, it's very easy to select them. And we also have our structural elements here. For the load combinations, so if I double click on combinations, I can use the uh, generator and present the list that I need. Uh, the critical one will most likely be this one here, the 102 with uh, 1.5 uh, times the uh, live load. <clears throat> What's important with the load combinations is that if you create your own load combinations, you have to include them um, for each material that you want to design. So if I go to timber, as you can see, there is a list for which one are going to be used to verify the deflection and which one will be used to verify the resistance of the uh, profiles. We also have the load duration that is uh, very important. And as you can see, the uh, case with the combination with only dead load uh, is uh, permanent or long term, and the uh, other two with live loads are uh, normal or medium term. Okay, so now if you want to look at the uh, settings for the design, um, so it's at the uh, bottom of the property panel. So we don't look at all of them uh, right now. Uh, we'll come back uh, after. But if we start with just some of the uh, basics, um, so this is where we would specify uh, if we have a, a load sharing case, uh, if the environment is uh, wet, dry. Um, we can also specify if it's uh, treated or not. Um, if we have uh, built-up sections, so we can. We also have a, a setting here for this. We have the whole diameter, which uh, it, it's different and specifying uh, a notch. So this will affect the um, the area of the section, but it, there's not gonna be the extra check for notches. Um, and you just have to be careful about the units here. It's uh, meters, not millimeters. And we have the temperature. And as I mentioned earlier, this is only for uh, US code. So with Canadian code, uh, whatever value I put it won't make a difference on the uh, design results.
Okay, so before showing you the more advanced option, I'll just show you the, quickly the results and the uh, workflow. So when I launch the analysis, I'll activate first the fine amount calculation to get the uh, forces. And then I can also select which material I want to design. So here I'll choose uh, timber design. If I were to uh, actually forget to do it, uh, it's not a problem because you can always um, add it after. Uh, so when I'm in results mode here, I could go here and ask the software to uh, do the uh, timber design calculation. As you can see, we have this uh, new uh, group that popped up in the middle, it says uh, timber design results. So this is where we'll be able to check the results graphically. So the first thing I normally do is look at the max work ratio, just to have an idea of uh, what's going on here. Uh, so you can see this goes up to uh, 75%. If um, you want to be in more detail, we could split it between strength and uh, deflection. Here I suspect it's mostly strength and not uh, deflection. So we have up to 75% strength and deflection. So that, there was some default values. Uh, so that's why we get the results even if I didn't uh, define it. Uh, so we have, have 50%. There's a, a lot more things we could display graphically. Um, so for example, we have uh, not all, but many of the K uh, coefficients. So for those who are all, uh, from the US, so this is the equal to the C. Uh, coefficient. So there's one like for uh, temperature, for if it's treated or not, and, and so on. Uh, here, since I kept the default value, it's probably all going to be uh, 1.0. Uh, I guess I just want to show that it uh, you can display them uh, graphically. Uh, there's other things like, for example, to check the buckling length, the um, lateral buckling uh, lengths, and, and so on. But uh, I think what is more important here is the uh, calculation node. So here we have a uh, work ratio of 75%, uh, but you know, how did AD arrive at that number? Uh, so we can see it with the uh, shape sheet. So this is where we have all of the uh, details. Uh, so first we have the uh, properties of the element and also the material at the bottom. In the center, we have all of the uh, k values. So if you try, for example, to uh, replicate uh, an example that you have uh, and your NCALC doesn't have the exact same results as AD, so the first thing to look for is you know, which of the k value uh, is different than, um, than your NCALC. Um, we have the verification and for deflection. So right now it's testing. So it says that the uh, most, the worst load combination was the 106, the place with the um, largest uh, deformation was the mesh 2.6. We have the uh, deformation uh, specified as a fraction of the length and then as a uh, percentage. And then for strength, so the content here will depend on uh, what type of element, but also uh, the internal forces. So if there is uh, no uh, weak axis bending, you're not going to get the uh, necessary weak axis bending, for example. Uh, and so here we have the uh, shear and uh, torsion. We have the uh, actual and bending. So this one is a pretty big uh, formula, but you, you can see exactly which, um, uh, which values were used um, to arrive at the uh, 35%. And we have the bearing here. So once again, I've not defined it, but there were some default values. So it's still giving me uh, some results. If we uh, want to have it like in a more uh, condensed format, something that's a bit easier to print, we have the uh, detailed report. So, oops, I guess there's a small issue here, but um, it's exactly the same information. It's just in one big table instead of being a dialog box with uh, multiple tabs. Okay, uh, and so now if we look at some of the uh, options, uh, my advanced option we have for the design, so you don't actually need to go back to the uh, model view to make those changes, so I can do them straight from the uh, results view, because in advanced design, we, like, we don't lose the um, calculation results when we make changes to our uh, geometry. We, we all have, we always have access to the old results, and we can directly modify uh, um, modify the structure 
uh, right here. So, uh, for example, for deflection, so uh, if I wanted to change the limit, so right now it's using the uh, deflection limit number two, so it's L over uh, 300, and uh, there's a fixed maximum of, zero, of three centimeters. So maybe I could increase this value so it doesn't cause any issues. And if we wanted, let's say, to check for L over, uh, let's say, 200, could change it uh, like this. And so now if we uh, rerun the uh, analysis, we have the uh, L over uh, 200 here. And so I was able here to launch only the uh, I can launch only this timber design. I don't need to. I don't need to rerun the full analysis because the, those settings here they don't affect the finite domain results. So I can keep the old internal forces with no uh, no issues. So this is a bit uh, faster. Then we have options for lateral torsional buckling. So uh, here it was uh, turned off by default. So as if there was like a flooring or something that was. Um, preventing it from having lateral torsional buckling. If I want to activate it, I can activate it for top, a bit wider here. So we have top and uh, bottom. Uh, and for both of them, uh, we have a drop down menu to indicate uh, how we want to support them. So by default, it's fully braced. Uh, we could also use braced at bearing points, uh, fully unbraced or um, user defined length. So uh, if let's say they were, they were jurors or something that was, um, protecting it against LTB at, at specific locations, I could enter the spacing here of those joists. For example, uh, two meters, and then it would use a, an unsupported length of uh, two meters. I'll keep it at uh, braced at uh, bearing point. Then for uh, bearing, so here we have uh, six uh, options so we have at the start the end and the internal bearing length so the reason why we have all three of those options is because in advanced design we have a mesh engine so it would be possible to connect an element like this without splitting the uh, horizontal one so the internal uh, bearing would be used for this connection here and the start would be this one we can look at the uh, local axis to make sure which one is start and end. So this is the start and this is uh, the end. I'll go back to this model. OK, so back where I was. So if I leave it as 0, the software will uh, try to automatically uh, the, um, this, decide on a value. Uh, which means it, it could be useful for the width because if the width is the full width of the member, I can just leave it as zero. If it was a different width, like if there was some sort of bracket or, or connection, I could specify a different value. But if it's just the same width as the member, in this case, 175 millimeters, I can just leave it as zero. And here I'll put the uh, length, for example, 0.15 for the start. And I'll put the different value like 0.2 for the end, and I'll leave the width at uh, zero, so it will be automatically uh, calculated. And so now we have our results here with, uh, it, it's only in this table, and so it's playing like the most uh, critical uh, one, which has a work ratio of uh, 41%. If we want to see uh, both sides, we could do it graphically. If I go to work resistance ratio, we can see specifically the ratio for shear, actual moment, and also for uh, bearing. And I have slightly different values because the uh, it's not the same length on both sides. And then we have the options for curved glue lambs. Um, so you can look at the diagram uh, either in the code or the handbook. I forgot which one it is. Uh, but yeah, there's a diagram you have to follow uh, for this. Um, and this will check, the, well, this will do the extra check for the delamination uh, in the center of the glue lamp. So you, the member on your model, like it doesn't have to be curved. Like the 
check will be done, whether it's a straight segment or if you try to create an arch, uh, in both cases, you can use that feature. Okay, now if we uh, look quickly at the US code, so I will uh, save this project. Maybe I'll save it with a name I can recognize a bit more easily. So I'll close the model and I'll change in the configuration menu, the code to the uh, NDS 2018. And I'll open my model back. So I don't have to like redo the model or anything like that. Um, it is possible to uh, change code on a project. In terms of the user interface and the modeling, uh, there is actually no changes. Um, it's all of the same options that are uh, visible whether using Canadian or uh, United States code. Uh, I think the I would say the, the main difference is probably the temperature that is only effective uh, for for US code and not uh, Canadian code. So if we relaunch the analysis with Timber Design, so one of the changes is that if you look at the coefficients uh, here, instead of being k, it's uh, c. Um, so for example, uh, so we'll cd, ct. So I guess in this case, most of them are 1.0. Um, but yeah, so this makes it very easy to validate uh, the model graphically, uh, and then in terms of calculation nodes. So it's kind of the same principle. We have all of our, our uh, material properties. We have all of the uh, members properties, all of the C values. Then we have the deflection check and the uh, strength verifications. So there are different formulas, but they're presented in the same way as the uh, Canadian code. Okay, so this is a uh... All I had to uh, show you today. Uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, put them in chat uh, and we can look at them right now. So I believe there's a couple already. Um, yep, so David said, can model be printed out to scale form, I'm sorry, scale frame member sizes? Uh, I'm not sure what he means by scale frame member size, but you could export, uh, you could export it uh, to many different formats. And I believe like if you use the IFC format, you should be able to like import it in a CAD, uh, CAD software fairly easily. We also have DXF exports. All right, David, let us know if that answered your question there. And then you also asked, can it be entered into a BIM or a quantity estimate takeoff of design? Uh, yeah, so, um, well, it, it would depend on what format your, uh, other software supports, uh, most likely it's going to be uh, IFC. Uh, but if you were working, for example, with Revit, you could be using our power pack, which would give you a better uh, transfer. But we do have many different ways you can transfer it to your uh, different software. And for quantity takeoff, it's also possible to do it straight in advanced design. So it's actually a fairly uh, popular uh, question. So let me just show you if I go back to uh, results. So we have the uh, report generator. And in the report generator, there it's a fairly uh, sophisticated one, so you can do a very complex report. But uh, most people would use it mostly just to get quick tables. And we have the uh, bill of quantities that we can generate. So this will give you the uh, quantity. So for each material, then for each uh, sections. Uh, so it gives like the area, perimeter, length, volume, surface, weight. So depending on what are your needs, you should be able to, um, you should have all the information that you need. Uh, and then we have per cross section, then per length, because not all of the GL 175 by 14 have this, uh, the same length. So you get to see uh, how many of each length uh, you have on your model. 
and we also have a more um, we also have a new module for uh, cost estimation and CO2 calculation. So uh, instead of you know taking those quantity and then putting putting them, for example, in Excel and then multiplying them by the cost, you could do the um, you could do this directly in advanced design. So uh, by default, it's going to be assigned to the material, but you could uh, specify like per element uh, a, a template for the unit cost. So you can specify a cost per weight, per volume, per area for plan element, and per reinforcement for uh, concrete design. All right. And David said, yes, dropping model into a CAD design at scale. Um, OK, and then we have another question. Are we able to create beam as flushed option and get some idea for which hangers to be used? Um, not a hundred percent sure what he means, but the uh, in advance line, so the members, um, as you can see, like it will be uh, like connected like from one center line to another. Um, like there could be ways to shorten the member so that it starts like right at the uh, face of the column, for example, it's a, it takes a bit, a bit more time to model, but it, it is possible to do it with a rigid link. Um, and then to, uh, yeah, if you wanted to get your forces, so you could get them either graphically or uh, in the results table to see like what uh, what size bracket you need. Uh, but honestly, I'm not 100% sure uh, what he's asking. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Dipin, if you wanted to elaborate even more on the question, um, just the, in the chat for us. And if it's something that we need to go back and look uh, for, we can totally do that as well. Yeah. And David mentioned, yeah, dropping model into a CAD design scale. Yeah. So if you export it with one of the export tools, the model is at scale um, in, three, in three dimension. Uh, so DXF is kind of like the easiest one to import because you can import a DXF in pretty much anything, but the DXF is just lines. Uh, whereas if you export AIFC, it's going to be like a, a section, a, I mean, a starting point, end point, and a like section property. So there's a bit more um, intelligence there, but you cannot import them into every software. So, uh, but most par most of the popular CAD tool, there should be, you should be able to find a, a plugin or you should be able to find a procedure to convert the IFC to a, uh, a to 3D solids and uh, yeah, to convert them. All right. Um, he said, I meant if beam is supporting floor joints or joists, can design the connection between beam and floor wood joists? Uh, well, we, we don't have connection modules, at least not for now, uh, for wood. Uh, the only connection that we could design is for uh, your code for uh, steel connections. Um, so yeah, you would have to uh, to do it manually. Uh, All righty. And I'm going to drop to um, in the chat box if you guys Think of any questions after the webinar. Um, you can shoot me over an email. I'll get you connected with the right person and the right answers. Um, David said, can it be put into any 3D models? Well, maybe I can just show him what it looks like when you uh, export it, uh, because it will be really dependent on your 3D software, 3D uh, software, like what is it able to import? Uh, what, model, what, what format does it, uh, does it support? Like for example, if it was Revit, uh, it, it would work really, really well, but uh, depending on what software you use it, it would depend. So um, if I were to export it to DXF, for example, so I'll save it. So we could decide to export only the axis. So this would be useful, for example, if you wanted to um, transfer it to like a different, for example, design or phantom and software that doesn't support import exports, you could at least have a starting point with the uh, center lines, or you can export the axis and cross section. So this will give you a more of a, uh, the tree volume. And then if I go to uh, AutoCAD, I just have to browse to the correct folder. Mm -hmm. 
and so like, so if I use DXF, so this is like the uh, the like simplest export export import export. Like this is the one that should work on pretty much any software. But the disadvantage is that all you get are lines. Um, if you want like a more lines and uh, like you don't get like a real uh, volume or solids. If you want to have those, I said you need to use like the uh, IFC format. So I'm using right now Advanced Steel. Uh, so this is a software that is able to import uh, IFC format or uh, many other uh, BIM formats. So with Advanced Steel, for example, I, 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 uh, I would do it would be with the uh, SMLX format, which is typically the best one. Or as I said, just the IFC typically it works uh, works pretty well. So you would export the IFC and then you would have to import it into uh, your software. So if I go to a new file, this would be import export, import IFC. And uh, yeah, so uh, I've said it's for steel structure, so it doesn't have the uh, members. But uh, if I did import a library with the glue lighted, or if I were to build my own library, or maybe like convert it from the one in uh, Advanced Design, it would automatically assign the correct member, and then I would have my uh, full 3D structure. But it would be more than just a um, uh, just like a, a solid, so now I just assign a random steel one. But as you can see, like it, it really transferred that like a, a structural element, not just a, a solid. Um, but in advance, I would say generally like the best transfers uh, would be with uh, Revit. Advanced steel works really, really well, especially for steel structure. For wood, advanced steel doesn't have the uh, libraries yet for it. Um, in a case of uh, yes, it would really depend on your your software. Uh, can you insert the inch in the beam? Uh, yeah, so if uh, you cannot insert like inside a continuous element, but what you could do is you could split it in two. Um, you do it with the subdivide, or there's like more than one way to do it. But if I were to split the element in two, then I can put the inch on either one of them or both, it would work too. So it would be with the releases. This is extremity one, so you can look at the local axis displayed on on it to see which one is which and uh for the moment on the strong axis that would be uh ry and so now it would behave with the with the engine 